Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem, and in this video we're going to be painting all of the Space Marines from the Indomitus box set in one go. And yes, I mean all of them. Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem. And uh, before we start, if you please want to just like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you want to see more if you're not already a member. And today, we're going to be looking at the, and building all the Marines from the Indomitus box set. I um, basically set myself a challenge because I'm fed up of having a backlog. Don't get me wrong, these are brand new Marines. And yes, one of the reasons I'm doing a video now is because they've only just come out. Um, but... Basically, I'm just trying to get on top of things before I get even more and I just know for a fact that I'm going to need these in possible upcoming games. So one of the first things I've been doing while preparing myself for a batch painting session such as this is looking at what I possibly can get away with by not including it on the sprue to, or on the model to start with. And of course, just trying to keep certain sections separate if at all possible. Now having a look at the instruction manual a lot of people will be like oh you shouldn't be doing it yeah here we go basically a lot of the assault marines because they are assault marines a lot of their gear is open so i can kind of get away with not actually having to have a lot of the equipment on now i'll probably keep the backpacks off i always keep backpacks off when i'm doing them but if i'm honest near enough all of these backpacks especially on the assault marines, are pretty much the same. So what I'll probably do is to paint all the assault marines, that shows you there, all the assault marines are silver, and I might even try and give a beaky helmet for the sergeant, if it allows me to, and it might not, if I'm honest. Um, also, I've had a look at these fellas, which are the ones with the melter rifle. Now, the ones with the melter rifle, which is on this sprue, all the weapons belong to different bodies so we can kind of get away again we can build up up to the point where the bodies are made and then we can leave the guns off and yeah i'm not on camera and then we can leave the guns off and that will mean that because we've left the gun off we can get away with actually paint you know we can quickly paint the chest how we need to probably using some contrast and of course i can make sure that the gun is off and the gun can be painted separately now, on the same sprue, we've got this new character, this Justicar-like chaplain. We've got a chaplain, of course, and we do have some of these shield guys, which I've forgotten what they're called. Blade Guard Veteran Squad. There we go. So, basically, the Blade Guard Veteran Squad, uh, a lot of their armour seems to be quite heavily cloaked, but it, when it's not heavily cloaked. Now, the shields are off. And each particular shield goes to a particular marine. Now I wouldn't say that the shields look any different from each other. This might cause a problem. One of my greater concerns is going to be the cloth. Now the cloth itself I'm wanting to do a red. Thankfully it's going to be like a crimson. For crimson fist because that's what I'm painting them like. A crimson red will be easy to do. But some of the characters such as for example the Blade Guard Ancient. He's majority robe. So what might be best off doing now is to leave his arm off. Put that together. Leave the backpack off, of course. And then spray him up black so that I can actually get some of the... Uh, a lot of that done by an airbrush. So what I'm doing is just going through and prepping. That's the best way of looking at it. Now, unfortunately, these bikers, which... I'm a bit disappointed about the riders are integrated as part of the bike so i can't paint the riders off the bike and therefore paint some of the saddle separately um the legs for example these two particular bits are too fiddly to be able to be separate or sideways so they're going to have to be painted all together and the wheels are all part of it as well something that i like to try and do is to paint the wheels off the miniature if possible but I'm not going to be able to with this. I'm going to have to paint them on the miniature. What I might do is to make it look like they're traipsing through a lot of mud. Some of them do come with fancy bases as well, such as this lad here. Um, I'll probably keep that off and uh, paint the base separately. 
So, while I'm part building them, I've actually come across a bit of a gripe. Now, they are push fit, so I did think to myself, you're probably going to be extremely limited on what you can and can't do with these figures. That's Games Workshop for you. Um, it's same with the last lot, you were very limited, of all a couple of snips and, uh, you know, if you, for example, the helmeted heads here, get rid of that bit, you can start posing it wherever you want. That's why my captain at the moment is facing forward instead of facing over his shield, which I don't like the look of that. And I've taken the chaplain head off because I'm not quite sure if I want him to actually have that head or whether or not I want a different head on there. One thing I don't, really don't like, that seems to be on a hell of a lot of the figures, is them shield pauldrons on, or whatever they are, on the shoulders. They're not optional. You have to have them on. And I hate them. Any other figure, oh, any other figure I've actually come across in Games Workshop's range has always had it as a bit of an optional. Now it seems to be you've got to have these shoulder, these little stupid shields on the shoulder. I can't stand them. And it's going to be, it's going to irritate the crap out of me. I know it is. Okay, so I've built them. Yay! And of course, little bits have been kept off and separate, which I've used my corks and uh, my cocktail sticks to help out with. Now, um, I've based them already because I normally paint the bases at the same time I like to undercoat the actual base itself. I've just got a mixture of sand and various other bits of gravel that I've picked up over the years. And I've tried to future-proof one of my sergeants. So I'm not sure where I've put him, no. As you can see, I've actually put a power fist. That's a Terminator power fist from Forge World. Uh, just, just had one spare, to be honest with you. So I've put that on there. Now, so now it's based, I'm going to just basically determine what's going to be what. So, I had to fully construct them. There was, there was no way of part building them to be able to paint them up. You might have been able to do it with the arms, but I just saw no point. So, the bikers, they're going to be sprayed silver. These guys are going to be sprayed silver. Uh, pretty much nearly everything is going to be sprayed silver, except the shields. The shields are not going to be sprayed silver. He's not. He's going to be sprayed black. The chaplain and I think it's a Judicar, he's going to be sprayed up black as well. And yeah, that's going to be, of course, silver. And then that is probably going to be Mechanica Standard Grey. That's a little bone bit that goes on the front shield of his. Um, so these are going to be sprayed black as well. I'm hoping you're getting to see everything of that one. So, yeah, I think I might need to lower it down there. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, and, of course, that's going to be sprayed black. So I've got all my little bits. The shields themselves, I'm going to actually do a... Um, that's going to be the crimson red um, with, um, like, a gold or brass trim. Uh, and then, of course, the rest of it is going to be crimson fist. So it's going to be, you know, the deep blue with the left hand. I think it's the left hand. That's actually the crimson one. And then the sergeants, it's both hands. Right, so let's get undercoating one. Right then, guys, we've sprayed. We've even got some of them, of course, sprayed in the black that we needed. But we're going to put them to one side for the moment. And we're going to concentrate on the silver. Now, the silver is going to need null and oil everywhere, all over every single one of them. Get cracking, boys. So, right, what I'm going to do first is to actually put some purple into this cloak now. Everyone might be going, why purple? No, oh, I want it to be a bit different. This is the Judica, or Justica, or whatever you want to call him. And I want him to be a bit different to the others. This is while I'm waiting for the null oil to dry on the rest of the actual figures, because it's going to take a while. It's a lot of null oil. Right, so just a gentle coating. Try, if you can, your best not to get it on any of the armour. So next up, I'm going to move with some Dark Reaper onto the Chaplain. Now, I'm just going to use this to highlight his armour. But remember, that shoulder pad is going to be the standard blue. So it'll mainly be the other armour pieces. Try and keep away from the cloak if you can. But now we're going to use a tiny bit of Dawnstone. Um, we're just going to try and catch the edges. Now 
Now with that basics done, we are going to be working on some of the shields. I know I've got the guy all glossed up there. I'm not going to work on him yet. Shields, man, this ancient, and that's pretty much it for, well, actually we could do the base as well. So if we work on the base now, I'm going to be painting, depending on what you're painting your bases, that will change. I mean, I'm going to be painting the bases, uh, my usual catch all 22 color, uh, which is basically just a really good way of, of making sure that I can fit on all boards. But I've got some um, Bicial Brown. Bicial Brown? Rhinoxide, sorry. Rhinoxide in this airbrush. And we're going to be painting all the robes on this figure and all the shields. Next up, we're going to use Corn Red. I'm going to show you the shields now. As you can see, this guy is browned off. Shields, we're just basically going to, again, just swing around it, make sure that you get in majority of the shield, but try and leave maybe a bit, maybe angle it so that it's kind of like that. And then you can leave some of the recess brown. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of corn red. This is mainly as a highlight um, to... Just trying, I mean, this one looks quite quite like a burgundy red, quite crimsony. I quite like it, to be honest. Um, so I'm just going to basically just do a little bit of a, just a highlight, just down towards the edges. Uh, and on the shields, it's going to be kind of kind of like an extreme angle. So just catching what I need it to catch. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I mean on this figure here. It's mainly going to be towards the bottom of the robes. As you can see, my thumb. Okay, chaps, so, ladies as well. Um, as you can see from this guy, we've already done his, kind of his airbrush as it were for the armor, but I've already painted the silver and we've got a known oil drying on there. Same for this guy and same for this chap. Uh, I've done the silver and I've put known oil ready for when we do the rest of the actual figures. So while we're waiting for that to dry, what we need to do is possibly reinforce some of the um, some of the red on this we're going to need to reinforce a little bit of the purple on that and I'm wanting to reinforce some of the black so I basically got I'm going to redo these two first I've got some Evil Sun Scarlet again I'm just going to use an old dry brush and the reason I'm going to be using an old dry brush these are dark colors they can be quite difficult to get out of your brushes so I'm using two brushes I've got spare for this particular dry brush so I can just discard them or put them to one side while I work you know on the other dry brushing with other paints because it's very very harsh to get this to get red out of the actual paint itself and I'm just going to gently just caress little bits because remember it's just for cloak but it has been airbrushed so just be careful oh, I don't want to take away any of the detail and I don't know why it's doing Might be picking up some of the known oil, but you get the idea. Right, so the dry brush that, dry brush the purple, and then we'll come into the black. So on the black chaplain, just gonna dry brush stone stone again. I'm gonna use a different brush. I don't want any of that red or purple to contaminate this brush and make you know give the dry brush a hint of something else. That would be annoying. Knocking everything over because I've got limited space. Ooh. Now, thankfully, what I did there is tested that on a section that's actually going to be um, gold. So then I know for a fact that that's not going to be armor paneling. So that's okay. So. Red, put on. Grey, put on. Purple, put on. All the null no is now dry. So, Storm Horse Silver. I'm going to dry brush all of them in Storm Horse, but making sure of our course that I'm, you know, only... I'm using a different brush for these guys. Um, than any bolt weapons that are like that, I'm just basically going to do just some edge highlighting to them instead. 
just trying to make sure that I'm doing as minimal work as I possibly can to rework it. So, it's almost silver all over. This is going to get us the effect that we need before we put on the blue. Now make sure you check this up real good. So, now we're going to use Telesar Blue contrast paint. We're going to paint this all over the silver, but not the silver on the weapons, not the silver on pouches or anything else, you know, like chains or anything. We are just going to do it on the armour. So on the bikes especially, we're going to be leaving um, like the internals, the main exhaust, but we're going to be painting that bit. So just pick and choose where you want in the blue to go. Now normally I'd airbrush this. If I was doing just these three as an example, I'd airbrush it, then I'd repaint the silver bits back on. We're trying to get them all painted. So we're trying to get all these lovely models done up at the same time. It's going to be better. Even though it'll be a little bit longer using the brush, it's going to be better in the long run using the brush because we're not going to have to cut back in to try and correct a lot of what we've already covered over with the airbrush. Right, when I find my appropriate brush, I seem to have lost my eye, there we go. Um, I'm going to use a medium shade. I'm also going to mix it up with a small base as well when needed. And make sure that your brush is nice and soft. Now we've already done the layering, we've already done the dry brushing, so putting this on should then give us the blue that we need. So I'm about halfway done. Um, I've got all the bikers done, got five assault marines done, just about to do these and two of the characters with a little tiny bits have been done. I've got another five assault marines, uh, the three guards and of course all the weapons um, to do. Now, just a, a quick word on when you're batch painting like this, try and do it in sets. So for example, I've done five marines, I'm doing three of these, I did three of them. Um, because then you, you, you have an idea of where you are. Don't just grab a model because sometimes you can confuse yourself. Um, I am trying my best, even though I did start painting that blue in there to try and wipe it off as quick as I can because it's a sergeant, so his both fists have to be crimson red because that's crimson fists. <sighs> Sorry. Um, it's basically just to try and make sure that you're getting a good neck support, try and give yourself time away from doing it as well. So do it in batches, do a, you know, again, oh, I'm going to do five marines, I'm going to take five minutes. I'm going to do these three, I'm going to take a minute or two. Because uh, you will start to, you sometimes get, <laughs> I like to call it like model blind. You just start painting, painting, painting. The next thing you know, when you come back to them, you look at the model again in about an hour's time, you've got no, uh, there's paint missing because you've completely missed it because you've just become blind to it. So always take rests when you're doing this. And then we'll come back. We're going to correct some. I have done little mistakes. I've got some paint on some areas I didn't want to. That's inevitable. I'm trying my best. I have swapped my brush to this Italia. It, well, it's a cheaper brush, but it's actually got a finer end. Um, so I can actually twist it to a nice little point, which it makes it easier getting into the nooks and crannies without having to change the brushes all the time. But continue. Come back to me. Right. I'll be honest. I've done loads and loads and loads. And then I've gone back over with some silver just to tidy up in case I've gone over anything that I should not have gone over. Um, I Don't get me wrong, I've not done the hands, because I, I forgot when I was doing some of these, I've actually painted some of the Crimson Fist's hands. Crimson Fist's so left hand is red, it were crimson, and if it's a sergeant or a veteran, then both hands will be red. Hence why I've not done them on the... Uh, shield guard or blade guards or whatever I'll be honest whatever they're called um, because of course they're going to be classed as the veterans I did actually want to put beaky helmets on these but the grot the, the bit that sticks up is too too big which is a bit of a shame although maybe I could have got some mark 4 helms that might have actually worked a little bit right so now it's all nice and dry I've got my armour woohoo right more contrast paint so you're going to love it <laughs> so 
Uh, more contrast, more contrast, more contrast, simply because contrast is quick and contrast is easy. Now, when I find my right paint, I'll let you know. So I'm going to be using Grace here. Now, all I'm going to be using Grace here on is the Veterans, not on the Veterans, uh, maybe, um, but the normal Marines, so the Chest Eagle, I'm going to put Grace here on too. So all of the Chest Eagle, I need to have Grace here on. I'm also going to put it in the eye lenses of every single one of them because they're going to be contrasted up later on. I've probably done that one before where you've seen me do that. Some of these guys here, no, they, they don't really need it. Uh, a lot of that's going to be painted normally. Do I need... Have a look. If you think you need it on a, a model, then put it on, of course. But if you think that you can get away without doing it, that's great. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more golds and things as well. I might have to put some, some on that for the rosemary bees, but I don't, I don't know. But yeah, all the chest eagles, uh, apart from the ones on the veterans and the sergeants, need some grey seal on. And purity seals. Sorry, I forgot to mention. <laughs> purity seals also need grey seal. Next up, we're going to use some Black Templar. This is going to be used on the weapons, the weapon casings. So, if I grab this Marine here, can you see him? Hey. I'm just going to get a small base brush, and then we're going to paint the casing black. This will get me the metallic black that I'm after. And we'll cut down on additional work. So do this, because of course Crimson Fist weapons are black. But do this to all weapons and handles. Just leave the bigger handles on the other models alone, because I've already done them with Gracie. We're going to be using a contrast paint on those. Next up, Nazgrig Yellow. Now this is just going to be used primarily on... See, the captains and that, they're going to have gold on, so I'm going to do them later in a moment. This is primarily going to be used on these types of weapons. So you see where they've got e eagle. Paint that in with the yellow, and then we're going to do the chests. If we... Yeah, so that's definitely on camera. <laughs> uh, leave that for now. Right, see so the chest and those little symbols. Crack on. Next up, we're going to use some Rhinox Hide. Now, this is going to be for all the fists. They're all going to be Rhinox Hide. And any capes that we couldn't do with the airbrush, such as the cape on this guy here. Well, the cape is the tabards. I believe that's what we're called. Uh, so all the tabards are going to be painted up with the um, Rhinox hide. And of course any belts and also paint up any of these as well. The gun housings, the holsters. So belts, tabard, and pretty much all of that front bit there will be brown. And any pouches. We're just going to paint up the pouches brown. Just keeping it all nice and uniform. And trying to keep everything flowing as quickly as we possibly can. So... I've got all of the brown done, and I've even, uh, you know, done his fists brown as well, just to try and uh, bring it in the red now. The red is going to be done by first applying corn red. Uh, we're going to put that onto all the cloak and any of the fists, but we're going to be leaving any of the pouches and, of course, any of the um, holster. All of that is going to be left. We're just going to leave that in the original colour. Uh, in the original brown because we're going to be highlighting that completely different so at the moment just apply corn red i'll give you a show of where you're needing to apply it make sure it's a little thinner than normal because we'll be applying this as a over but again not too thin because we are trying to make sure that we're minimizing the amount of time we need to put this on the figure simply because we want speed to try and get this done so i've got my captain figure we're going to be putting it onto his robe 
Crimson fists, crimson robe, really easy way of doing it, but not the belt buckle. So the robe and not the belt buckle. Try and leave recesses if you can and try and just go in one direction. And then the hand. This guy's got the other hand, but that's on the other shield. So again, paint it up, leave the recess as best as you possibly can. Then the handles. And do that for all your figures. So, yes. Some Pure Evil Sun Scarlet. I've tried to water it down a bit. I'm running out of space on my wet palette, if I'm honest, my custom made one. Ooh. And basically we're just going to do a little bit of edge highlighting now on the fists themselves. It should be light enough that it doesn't really catch too much. Of course you can just highlight little tiny bits of it and then put it around your purity seals if you've done them red as well. A spot in the middle if they've got room for it so finish off all the crimson red and then come back and we'll get red ready to double brown okay so for the leather uh, sort of pouches and the models I've got we're going to be using Morn Fang Brown watered down as a nice highlight just trying to keep it to the edges if we can And then what we're going to do as well is we've sort of, once you've done the edge, just put some little sort of striation lines in, in into the actual leather. And just Once you've put the ink on there, just makes it look a little better, makes it look a bit more realistic. Right, we've got plenty to do, as usual. Crack on. Okay, now one of the next processes we're going to be doing is your shabti bone. Now... I'm not going to be doing your Shabti Bone on what I consider sort of like some of the lower ranks. Like these guys, um, these guys, none of these are going to get the bone. Um, anything sort of like bone related is just going to stay as it is. Um, these guys, none of their chest pieces with the skulls on, they're not going to get any sort of like bone colour. It's just going to be kind of, kind of like your rank and file. Needs to be some form of hierarchy. Now I've already gone ahead with a gold on the shield. Uh, that was because I just started painting gold and I thought, oops, I needed to paint the skulls first. So the basically the skulls that you're going to be painting are the ones on the shields. So those and of course the ones on the inside. And then you can always paint the gold trim afterwards. I don't think there's going to be any on this guy because any skulls on him is going to be gold. Yeah. We'll not be doing it on him. We'll not be doing it on the lieutenant. But again, on the shields, we will be. So, because of course we've got there's the bone here and then there's already a bit the skeleton. Which is off, so we're going to be painting that up with the actual bone. And then of course that will be painted up with the bone as well. Everything's been knocked over. Whoopee! This lad here, um, he's mainly going to be painted, any bone sort of areas is going to be painted up gold. Um, mainly to make him stick out from this fellow. Now this fellow, I'm going to be painting his head. It's going to be a bony colour. And then any, any of the actual skulls apart from... Any of there, that's going to be gold. Any of that, so I'm going to be painting that. I'll paint that. But that, as an example, is going to be on the actual armour. So if it's going to be on the armour, it's going to be gold anyway. But I'm going to paint that because I'm going to keep that shoulder blade black. But just pick and choose what you're wanting. Uh, which ones you are wanting to be gold and which ones you're not wanting. Sorry, to be born and which ones you're not. This hand, of course, is definitely going to be born coloured. But the banner, now the banner itself, we'll be doing all sorts of this guy eventually. Uh, he's got a little skull there, so yeah, go on then, we'll do that. And he's got a skull, yeah, so we can do those. 
But the banner, I'm going to be painting all that up with some airbrushing and then we'll come back in and cut that in. Because of course some of these models I am going to be working properly on. But at the moment, just crack on with as, back, as much as this bone as you can. Well, as much as the bone as you want to. I mean, if you want to paint the guy's chest pieces bone it, you can do. If you want to paint these little weird guards I've got on the wrist, gold if you want. But I'm not going to be the answer screen. They're going to be pure blue. So now I've got my gold pretty much done as best as I possibly can. I'm going to use some Talan sand on those beads. So some of the models have beads coming down or bits of chain. Rather than painting them up, I'm just wanting to do them as if it's some form of like rosary bead, maybe. Um, but I'm just going to do them into land sand, and we'll be getting onto the inking stage very soon. Right, I've got my beads done. Should be on here and down there. Look, I've got my beads done. We've got the gold on. We've got the red on. We've got the Grey sear on. We've got the brown on. Highlighted. And now we're going to shade it all. So we're going to use a mix. Two part Agrax Earth Shade. One part Lamium Medium. I use these, um, if you can see right there, as a mixing palette for inks and washes. Because I find it, it just sort of settles on top a lot better. Right. About three of that. So we've got a nice runny shade. Now what we're gonna do, so for example on this lot here, I'm gonna paint all of that. All of that. I'm going to paint his hand. So anything that's red, and anything that's brown on your normal marines, you need to paint up. Now of course, any purity seals you come across. You also, on these, you need to paint over gold. So this bloke here is going to get a real, a lot of a wash. It's like he's going to have spilt it down himself. across make sure to get no that noise in the background right <laughs> sorry um now just use some drooky violet and i want you to put that into all the red purity seals that we have painted not that much now, speaking of those purity seals, uh, basically the tabards that are coming off and any of the cloth that we've got, I know we've coated it in the Agrax Surf shade, I'm just going to put a coat of Reichland Flesh shade over it as well. Just to make it stand out just a little different to what we've already got. So I'll do that. Again, just on any of these. We'll only do it once your Grax Earth Shade is dry. So we're still waiting for everything to dry off properly. We're going to get some Orc Flesh. And we're going to put that into the eyelids of the Helmeted Marines. So hopefully this does the same effect. The other ones, yeah. That's fine. And that's fine. So put those into the eyelids of all your, marine, all your marines with helmets. The ones without will come to in a bit. Now I have left some handles free. If you can see on some of the actual models. That's more biggest on that one. So while the rest is drying. I'm going to now paint the handles with uh, Volupus Pink. Uh, and that will give me the uh, the handle wrap colour that I'm after. Now I'm going to move now on to flesh wash. If you don't have flesh wash, you can use Agrax Earth Shade. Um, just I find this one to be a bit. It's got a bit more now. It's well, it's got a bit more to it. 
and basically you're just going to be running it across see if we can see it from here we're just going to be creating some text don't know right way creating some text with a fine brush across your scrolls all right guys right so uh, i've done i've actually sorry yep there we go i've started putting all the weapons and everything else back on the actual models uh, we've still got the faces to do and some other little bits to do as well but at the moment i'm just going to do some more on these now that the um pink as dry we're just going to go over that with caribou crimson just so we can darken the tone of it and give it a more red like hue and that's on all the weapons that you've done with the pink so now i'm going to concentrate on the power weapons so mainly these guys with the swords and of course we've got as captains now in the meantime while i've been waiting for stuff to dry i have gone forward and painted silver on the belt buckles and just done a little bit of the old tidying up uh, now we're going to be putting the blue onto the swords and the blue i'm using is gulliman uh blue but you can use, if you haven't got Gulliman Blue, because I think it's a glaze paint, which we're not doing anymore, which is really irritating. I've actually got quite a bit of it, because I, this is how I used to paint. I used to use Gulliman Glaze to try and paint these. If you haven't got Gulliman Glaze, if you notice, Telesar Blue is kind of very similar colour, but it's a bit different. So you just need to thin that down a little bit with some of the technical medium. And then you'll get a similar looking colour if you haven't got any Gulliman Glaze. Or if you want to preserve your Gulliman Glaze for other projects. So all I'm doing, just a wash. Anything that's considered a power to me a power weapon, which this would be, that I might do. I'll come back to that one. But the basic power weapons, I'm just going to paint it on. And I do it down because I try and leave a greater deposit of blue at the bottom. So down the blade. So basically, like that, leaving the greater deposit of blue at the bottom so that it gives it a stronger blue hint, and that will give us our power swords. Now with this guy, I'm going to, still do the Gulliman Glaze, kind of going to do it halfway down, I don't really want to do it all the way to the end. I put it on lightly and then I'm just going to rub a bit off with my finger. So I'm kind of just concentrating mainly on the bottom end. So like wherever text is, kind of trying to load it up, put quite a bit on the bottom bit, but then rub it off with your finger towards the top. And then you'll just get that hint of power blue at the bottom. So... Now we're going to be doing these three models to get the heads on. Right, so what we've got is some uh, ratskin flesh. I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently. We're going to be doing it properly. You can use contrast paint if you want to just do this quick. But this is one of those little things where it's like those little... Sometimes having a little flare can turn it away from being like a really, really rushed job. Because it is a rushed job that we're doing. We're just doing, trying to do it quite classy. We've got some more steps to do, of course. We've still got plenty of steps to do, but I'm getting all of these models done real quick. So starting off, we've got some rat skin flesh into a wet palette. And basically, base coat your faces. Make sure that your first layer is dry before putting on your second. And on the chaplain, we are going to need to make, uh, come back in with some metal to do the robotic face later. But for the moment, just ignore it if you can. So then I'm going to mix in a little bit of Cadian flesh tone with some extra water. Give it a nice consistency. You give it a nice flow. And to make it quite, sorry, I've been watching films while painting, uh, make it quite runny and a little bit transparent. And then we're going to paint that on and we're just going to try as best to avoid the recesses. Uh, 
And then what you need to do is add a little more Cadian flesh tone and put that back on. Again, just creating a bit of a, if I'm doing flesh, I like to try and do it, sort of like trying to make it flow one way. But I'm trying to create more of a highlight. I know I'm doing the flesh in the mouth. It's just quicker and easier. And we'll get some. So rather than it being a mix now, this is pure Acadian flesh tone with a bit of water. And again, avoiding deeper recesses. We're just picking it up and picking it out. Just watch yourself on the collars because that's the only place I always seem to catch when painting faces for Space Marines. Hence why I've got some more paint out. Last but not least, a little bit of thin down uh, Kizzler flesh. And we're just going to be picking out some facial details on this. So make sure it's nice and this one's nice and thin. You don't want too much detail. Like I said, try and avoid the colours if you can. Now the blended heads are dry, we're gonna be sticking Reichland flesh flesh shade. Not too much of it. But we're going to be putting that all over what we've just done. Now, the bikers. We're going to be doing mud soaked tyres. So, I'm doing typhus corrosion all onto the wheels. I'm doing it with a large brush. It was already messed up. Because I know that this is gonna get messy and horrible. So I don't want to ruin any of my good brushes. But by doing it with typhus corrosion, you'll give your tires that muddy feel and then if you did the uh, putting bits because if you notice on mine I put bits of granite and dirt on and when it comes to basing it up with an airbrush later on I can just basically give it a good uh, make sure that it's got that sort of effect of as if it's going through mud and it's been splashed up and it's been caked on so just put this all over your tyres It's a good way to give yourself some muddy wheels. Now that the rack and flesh laid is dry, I just want you to have a look at just that head and how easy it is sort of blending it all together and makes it come out pretty quick. So that technique is quite good if you're just wanting to get through a lot of like faces fast. Uh, it's one of those techniques you learn when you're painting Imperial Guardsmen. Lots of them. Check that video out. I painted 50 odd. Oh no, was it 30 odd and then 50 odd gene steels? It might have been that. So I, even when you're painting gene steel a coat, you need to know how to do faces quick. Now, looking at this, a lot of these are nearly done. I am going to be doing something special with that banner. So stick around for that. Um, but a lot of these marines, uh, apart from of course I've got to do all the backpacks. Are pretty much finished now the backpacks are just going to be dead easy all we're going to do with the backpacks is just to basically spray them silver and then put the uh wash them with known oil dry brush them as we've done and then of course put the blue contrast paint on top some of the other backpacks are a bit more special they'll have like gold rings of all i'll be honest with you i don't like the gold rings so i'll be trimming them off and filing them off because i just like a normal backpack unless it's you know properly ornate uh, and then of course there'll be some that uh, go on these guys that have special banners and you know everything else that we've already used sorry this guy here 
uh, that we've already used techniques during this particular time so i'm going to get those done but i am going to go on to doing this for you guys and i'll even show you what i'm going to be doing regarding basing these so you know what to proceed so you know how to proceed with these bike tires Next up, we're going to be using Green Stuff's World Color Shift Burning Gold. Now, if you haven't got Burning Gold, just paint the banner with gold. Uh, and then the rest of it, you're just effectively doing the same as what you've done with the other stuff. I've glossed this up with a gloss uh, varnish to make it a glossy black. And then, of course, you can just paint your skelly bobs and you can paint your, your banners, uh, sorry, your purity seals, just using the same techniques that we've already done. So... What I'm going to do is to effectively just airbrush this. I have used parafilm to mask off my model. I don't want to ruin everything that we've currently done. And then just get cracking. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the bikes. Um... I'm just doing my standard basing, so if you actually look at one of my original basing videos, um, it's basically just some Rhinox hide with some uh, Scrag Brown and then uh, some more bone style colour dry brushed over the top, so it's just a basic basing. But while I'm doing these, I'm wanting to make them look very dirty and dusty, so I've got some Steel Legion Drab, I'm going to use an airbrush, you can use dry brushing, and I'm just going to make them look dirty. If you take a look at that, it's very subtle, but it's got a hint of that dirt on there, if you are not got to do the usual black tyres on there. And then, just do the base as normal. And there you go, they're pretty much done. Uh, I might add a few flourishing touches towards the end. I've still got the black rims to paint on the actual base and put the transfers on, but that's not something, that's, you, don't, you don't have to do that. That's something I'm going to be doing for myself because it's more on a, uh, of an aesthetics purpose. Uh, I might even put some like melter burn maybe on some. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've done the little effect there on the bikes, but I'll probably do some metal burn. But that'll be something for another video. Uh, but hopefully you can understand how quickly it is to get these guys done if you're trying to do a simple paint job. Uh, Crimson Fists with this metallic colour. To me, it works. My Pretty much nearly my whole arm is painted up like this now, uh, which always looks great on the battlefield, especially when everything looks great together. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you want to see more. Uh, I might actually do a lot more mass painting videos. I've got a, start, uh, a starter set um, for Chaos, which I'll probably end up doing quite soon as well. And I've got some other, maybe some green... Maybe some Dark Angels that uh, I've got a commission for. I might put those on the video as well. But thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next time.